Welcome everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Rachel Chase and I am here tonight on this last full moon of 2019 to um, hold space and be a steward for our circle and our community. Um, and anyone who watches this, I will post this on YouTube later um, and in, it'll be in the Facebook group. I would love to first also acknowledge um, and send appreciation to all of you in, in, in this community um, and those of you especially who are in my Visioning Circle Facebook group. There's 212 of you now, 212. What an interesting thing. I just checked the number today. I don't usually do that. I'm not like always checking to see, but I just happen to notice there's 212 in the group and here we are on 1212 about to go into 2020. So we have some really amazing numerology going on here in our shared intentions. So it's beautiful. So thank you for being um, amazing as far as just sharing your love and your earnestness for keeping um, life real and authentic for yourself and others and your families and um, keeping up with each other. Um, you know, um, of course, this this work that we are all doing together to be as real as possible, uh, you know, and, and, and find our way through these crazy times um, while really standing firm in our knowing that um, lo life is about love at its core. And that's what we're here to do is to bring that love into the world by just being ourselves. And that takes work, doesn't it? it takes upkeep, it takes daily effort. Yeah. And I know that lately this week has been a lot of uh, wildness, <laughs> energetically speaking, um, kind of uh, maybe old things coming up to be healed, maybe relationship things. We're going to talk a lot about all that kind of stuff tonight. But first, I would love to um, open this circle of intention, this ceremony um, of honoring um, by just having us come into our body and our breath. So I invite you all, wherever you are, um, it, you know, if you're doing something right now, totally get it. But if you're able to sort of be in um, a space of stillness, um, let's, let's start to come into that vibration here and um, make this be a real sacred spiritual practice that we're doing together as a group here and now. So um, if you can close your eyes, if you're not driving or grocery shopping or operating machinery or cooking, and, um, close your eyes, um, standing or sitting or lying down and take a deep breath in and out. Releasing out the mouth. We'll do that two more times. And once again, in through the nose, out the mouth. Taking this moment to pause, to be in the body, to be in the breath, to become aware of your connection in the earth, in earth, in the being that we call earth, this alive planet that we are part of. Be present in that connection. Bring the awareness in of your deep, deep connection in Mother Earth. And take a couple more breaths. Wonderful, thank you. 
I'll scroll through the comments just a little for just, um, I may not do this again later, but I'll just, I just want to say hi to Amy, to Jennifer, to Andrea, to those of you who've come into the circle. Oh, Mari Carmen, hello, dear. Hey, Candy, welcome, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so here we are. Here we are creating space together. Um, and I know that today um, and the days uh, yesterday and tomorrow and really this whole time, there are so many people coming together to um, honor this moment, to observe it, to be present with now. Um, it can feel like we're just, you know, like sliding right into 2020, right? <clears throat> and so um, we're not there yet. We're so close, but we're not there yet. We're here. And we're here on this day of 1212, which is an, an incredible moment of honoring um, the relationships between love, transformation, responsibility, and relationships. <laughs> it's like the relationship between all those things and then also how that's highlighted in our relationships. Um, but there's a, a, a big light being being kind of broadcast into this moment that is highlighting the energy of 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 a force of just just pure healing love that's coming into all these aspects, all these aspects of our lives. And so much is going on right now around our perception of things. Um, and so I want to invite us tonight to be available to a fresh insight, a fresh awareness around our lives, around your personal intentions, around those passions, those things that you're creating in your world, whether it be with your family, with your children, with your mate, <laughs> your partner, with your friends, with your community, with your work, um, with your home. Um, you know, so maybe we've been doing a lot of work and I know this year so much of us have been doing so much work on so many levels. And um, what I see happening and what I think we're all sensing here is that um, a big change is happening, <laughs> you know? And it's like, ooh, what's it gonna be? And I, I had a, an amazing, I wanna share with you a real insight that I had a very personal, a personal growth um, aha that came in in a real fresh way for me recently that um, was really brought in in a, in a moment where this past few weeks I've been hosting an online group, a mindfulness, um, really just we're practicing mindfulness together to see what we can observe in our lives and notice um, where we're kind of holding on to old patterns and ways of being and maybe where we're letting things soften or where we have resistance to change, um, those kinds of things, being mindful around that in our lives and having just tons of compassion for all of it. And I've really been probing deep into my own sense in my being of where is this energy? And this is a lot of work that I do with my clients is noticing where in your body you're, you hold fear, essentially, doubt, worry, what is that fear? Rather than what is the fear, where is the fear, right? Um, and, and just kind of really getting in touch with the sensory um, expression of the fear in the body, right? So as I was going into that with myself, really just a few weeks ago, this was when I was having this huge aha moment and um, dialoguing with my muse as it were, or channeling or intuiting, if you wanna call it, when I was really going into the space of what we call shunya in yoga, the space of um, deep listening with openness to whatever comes. Um, I realized, and I was having a, a inner dialogue, a conversation with higher self, a conversation with that source energy. Um, and what I heard was very clear, and I wrote it down at the moment, which was, 
that there was an honoring and appreciation and a kind of um, a congratulations for <laughs> the fact that um, that I've been doing so much work around um, trusting myself and trusting love and um, really um, also being available to the mystery. Okay, so this is this aha about the mystery I started having that I I love connecting with this not knowingness to go into the space of not knowing and just let it be. Let it be not known. Um, sometimes I push hard to try to get the answer, right? Or figure it out, right? And I'm probably not the only one. And I know I've had many conversations with some of you about this very thing. So, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out, we're trying to control the situation so we feel safe, right? So letting go of that, sitting in the unknown. Now, getting this very clear sort of um, response from spirit that, good job, way to go, right? We're proud of you. But then there's this other piece to it. But what we really want you to know is that there's this next part of it, which is now, what can you do here? What can you trust the mystery? Not just be okay with the fact that it's the mystery, but can you even trust it? And that just, I felt my inner child go, oh, ah, oh, ah, <laughs> right? The unknown, it's classic, the fear of the unknown, right? <laughs> so I, I was like, whoa, there, it, I just felt the fear thing, right? My, my little girl, so she's scared in there going, no, I, I have to know, I, I have to know. And, and, and the relationship I've been having with that, I have to know, has been to soothe it, which is lovely. It's self called self-compassion, right? To reassure her, you're taken care of. The universe is taking care of you. And that aspect of being, that higher self being, that goddess, that um, great mother, the, the consoling, divine, feminine, the earth, the expression without words, the holding, the comforting is, has been coming in more and more and more for me over the past year or two or three. And I know many of you and we have all been working in that field, right? Of the divine feminine, of, of the, the holding, the strength to allow the creativity to come forth, which is what we've been really working in this year, this creativity, it's a three year, right? But then here was this moment of fear of, we want you to trust that unknown. And so I've been sitting with that. And then over the last few weeks and today in my meditations, which that whole gift of my plate being clear today, um, brought me back to another aspect of what we've been working on in our work as yogis and as meditators and our Reiki. Um, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. Um, is to infuse the now moment with love. So before I talk about this insight and the relationship and the process that we're kind of um, I'm starting to take us into here a little bit. I'm, I'm just giving it a little bit of an intro. Um, I want us to experience something and then we'll put those pieces together so that we can um, um, really um, utilize this moment to heal on those levels that I talked about in the beginning, which is our personal and our relationships and then also our work in the world. So many of us, right, have said yes to this work in the world. So we're going to do the heart coherence um, activity first. And what heart coherence is, is to bring us into the field of the living heart energy. This is not, it is not only our capacity to love and bring compassion, but it is also working with the physiological slash spiritual, because it's all one, right? The energy the body, it's the same. We are spirit, we are body, it is one. But our heart, like consider your heart. Now here's the thing, I had been missing this crystal. I thought it was lost. Let's see if you can see it, okay. 
Can you see this quartz? Isn't that amazing? I'm going to turn it around here. Doesn't this look like a heart? It's like a bird or heart. And, and she is just, there she goes. There she is. You can see the bird heart. Okay. <laughs> right? So I want you to imagine this crystal. Now, she came back to me today. I'm not joking to you. <laughs> okay. I thought she was lost for the last two weeks. I couldn't for the life of me figure out where she went. And then I, I had a dream about her and then I had to let her go. And then she came back to me. She came back to me today on the full moon in Gemini as a confirmation for all of us. I truly believe this. So <clears throat> well, let's go into the heart space and I want you to just put your hands on your heart if you can over your anatomical heart, wherever that might be. Just kind of feel where it is. And what we're going to do is imagine that you are breathing, that your heart is like your lungs and your heart is breathing in and out, in and out. And I want us to slow that breath down. Your heart, your heart is breathing. My heart is breathing. Our hearts are breathing together. I want you to imagine that crystal that I'm holding, this beautiful, clear quartz heart crystal as, as a bird that's just singing the song of love and breath in your heart. And that clear full moon energy is just filling your heart. Just filling your heart with full moon, crystal clear, quartz energy. And it's harnessing this cohesive moment. Your heart is breathing. Okay, so let's see if we can stay in this awareness as we continue this ceremony here that your heart is breathing. Now, as we go into our healing process tonight, and I'm going to go through my notes that I wrote today to sort of make sure I talk about the things I wanted to bring up. <clears throat> this is the love energy I'm talking about. It's peaceful. It's strong. And it's totally connected. Mind body, breath, right? That's the quantum level. Infinite possibilities. And so if there's infinite possibilities, and if there's this great unknown, and if we have fear of that unknown, at least maybe if a part of us does, maybe it's not always there. Maybe for some of you, you've cleared that already and just creeps up a little bit here and there. Or maybe you're like me and you're at this point where you're really shedding another level in a layer that you didn't even know was there. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I'm bringing this up because as we expand, as we grow, as we bring our work more fully out into the world as so many of us are, can get a little shaky and scary and we're pulling off another layer or we're growing another energetic expression and it can be like oh can i handle that oh 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 my goodness <laughs> right when we come back to that 
mind body spirit connection in love real un un unfettered un uh, what's unlimited <laughs> the the infinite love space the space where we go into deep unconditional right acceptance and that's that's the teachings of mindfulness too when we can just accept what is then we welcome in the new and the new is going to come anyways the new always comes we can be more welcoming of it but that piece about the fear and the unknown if we are infusing the unknown with this love doesn't that help you trust it it helps me it helps me trust it you know so it's it's about alchemy it's about transmuting that fear into love by projecting the love into that space of the unknown and in that way we are co-creating with the mystery we're giving it it's that law of attraction thing too right whatever we're projecting into the field is what we magnetize or what we create or what is um enlivened what is energized because we're focusing on it essentially so it's that nuance thing of it's not just about saying i'm manifesting this therefore it is it's i am allowing the power of love to do the creating so 12 12 it's a three year this is a year of divine creation um i have this um really fun birthday card um that i got many years ago let me see if i still have it that i put it somewhere um and it was about the expression of 12 and i just want to see if i can find it oh well it doesn't matter because i remember what it is um <clears throat> it's creative expression it is unbridled there's that word again did i say unfettered unbridled <laughs> it's funny i almost didn't say unbridled but i'm saying it again because um what is bridled it's like a horse right those bridles kind of like control and take those bridles off <laughs> we do not need to control the situation the way we think we do now this energy that's within us this 12 12 year three there's so much information out there with channeled information and astrologers that brings so much to this moment about the divine feminine and about um what we're experiencing with this astrology but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring a little bit of that in in the form of some of my crystals just to give you a kind of relationships dynamics of what's going on here <clears throat> i'm using my um tiger's eye with the dragonfly on it Victoria, if you're still watching, there's the dragonfly. <laughs> um, dragonfly is the is, is a very divine message when we see the dragonfly. Aren't they amazing? They're magical. They're spiritual. They're all around us. And then this tiger's eye, which is just super powerful. And I love this one because it just fits right in my palm and I can hold on to it. Now I'm using this as Pluto. <laughs> so I'm going to look at some of my notes just to give, bring us into a little bit of the astrology. I don't go too deep with the astrology because I'm not an astrologer, but I do love to bring in the, um, the aspects that are going on to help us sort of understand the story of the big picture because I love looking at the big picture and then we go in to do some of the personal healing stuff, okay? So we have Pluto here. And I brought the tigers in for Pluto because, I mean, tiger's eye for Pluto because Pluto, and it's also kind of a smallish crystal, so Pluto is like way out here, right? <laughs> but it's super powerful. It's about transformation. Pluto is about unearthing, and it's also about sort of trudging up all the stuff that isn't true for you and just purging it. And sometimes that can feel pretty intense, right? It also kind of shakes things up and makes us go, whoa, Here's this whole fresh way of doing something, um, which is amazing. It, it, it truly is. It truly is amazing. Um, and so it brings in new opportunities that way. <clears throat> now, 
um, also helps us to clear at attachments that are getting in our way of our empowerment. And then we have um, Saturn, which I'm going to use this Lemurian crystal for Saturn, which is really interesting. It's, I use this crystal. I got this crystal in Mount Shasta in 2011, and I just think it's, oh my goodness, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot going on with this one. It's a peach color. Um, and Saturn is about, you know, taking responsibility for our actions. It's um, very much sort of in the here and now and the concrete way of things of saying, okay, um, there's a cause and effect to the situation. What are we doing in our lives? So if there's a relationship going on, I'm not going to name exactly what those are astrologically, but there's an astrological situation going on right now between Pluto, Saturn, and Venus. <clears throat> and Venus is where is it? There she is, my Chalcedony. So Venus is um, all about love and um, beauty um, and also um, flourishing financially too, creative flow. Um, and then we have, and I'm going to bring her back, the moon. So Pluto, Saturn, and Venus. Responsibility, deep transformation and love and then the moon which is also bringing in a very powerful energy of love too because of its relationship to all of these and because the fact that it's in gemini right now and gemini is about communication um, and mercury is the planet of communication so it's like with with venus and the moon we have an ability to transform our communication with ourselves <laughs> and take responsibility for our transformation, which is totally happening right now. We have this huge um, wave of support, okay? For whatever it is we're creating that's changed in our lives. For some of us, this change is coming as a welcome change and we're saying, oh my gosh, I manifested this. This is exactly what I was thinking, but I wasn't expecting it. Wow, for some of us it's, oh no. What just happened? I just had this huge loss. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? It was unexpected. Um, and for some of us, it's like, oh, finally, I get to sort of like do something different within myself. You know, I'm gonna give myself permission to do this now. You know, um, deep permission coming in. Um, and so let's all really hold space for each other now. And I want you to bring in the, the visualization that we are in a circle, which is a sacred space, and that we are holding this space for ourselves and each other as we go through this transformation, as we uh, take care of our hearts because it takes real bravery to infuse the unknown with love. So it, imagine that light coming down now. Let's do some energy work around this as we just sort of tap into these themes that I'm bringing up right now. And just take some breaths and maybe even bring your arms up in the air and connect, imagine the whole world and imagine the cosmos beyond and imagine the universal field in all its beauty and splendor and the sacred geometry of it all, the relationships between the orbs and all of the light in the universe, all of the seen and unseen and photonic expressions of life that get to come into us at this moment in time to activate this amazing creative potential that we are harnessing right now. Imagine it coming down and through the levels and layers of space into your body, like dancing photons, different colors, waves of light flowing down into your mind field. The great co cosmic consciousness we are connected really connect with that because we're using a lot of mind healing tonight. We're using our minds to heal. And our mind is more than just the brain, as you know. 
It's our full conscious awareness, which is all about the heart and all about the gut and all about our energetic levels and layers of expressions, our, our energy bodies, if you will. And that they're all connected. We're all interlinked. We are all completely connected in the field of oneness. Bring that awareness in and take a few more breaths as you really channel in that starlight, just like this candle I have next to me with all the prisma colors. I want you to really tune in with, see how that's happening. Imagine that's coming through from the cosmos or that it's just coming straight through into you through from that candle. And that you are that ray of light. You are it. You have it all in you, all these rays, and you are a ray yourself. This is light work. It's so powerful and important. Our minds, our imagination space, our creativity, multidimensional truth that we are, we operate in these invisible ways that maybe can't be explained with rational thought. The spiritual work, work that we do here is not about trying to explain something rationally. This is about feeling it and knowing it and being it and remembering it, remembering the truth of who we are. And so as you remember this truth and, and, and just harness this truth in your body, that you're part of earth and that you are like the crystal you are all those multifacets. You are perfect and unique. And yet you express all of that light coming through the universe, through you and into this world. You reflect it, you refract it. <laughs> you channel it. You store information, just like a crystal. Very good, thank you. And such a beautiful energy tonight, it's so beautiful. The sun of course is in Sagittarius, the moon is in Gemini. Sagittarius is about truth. It's about direction and focus. <laughs> it's about sh shining its light on this Gemini moon so that the full creative expression and the changeability, the mutability it's called of this Gemini moon can be um, harnessed and utilized here. So collectively there's a split going on, right? There's a lot of fear and then there's also a lot of love and trust, right? So we get to choose whether we want to be in trust or be in fear, um, and and we're giving an, given an opportunity to be able to shift more quickly into that trust space. And what is the trust space? It's the love space. So when when we're feeling a little bit unsure of how to move into trust, because what we may be seeing at the time seems calamitous, we go back into the love space, the compassion space, the heart is breathing space. And that brings us back into the trust space. Okay. <clears throat> so as co-creators in this circle of love that we are, and we are all co-creating, we get to choose the kind of energy we wanna put out into the world. And all humans on this planet are co-creating our future together. Right. And maybe there's a mentality that says, I'm just sick of all this the way it is. I want it to just fall apart and end so we can get a do over and just let everything just end. That's a kind of um, fear based way of seeing things. Right. Like I wish it would just all um, be destroyed in a way so that we can rebuild. What if instead of destroying to rebuild, we transform the heart with deep waves of love, 
love, love, love, love into the earth sphere, into the earth plane, into all the hearts of everyone all through this planet. So I'd like us to do that process together tonight, but I wanna bring a couple more things in. So let's do some processing for your personal intentions um, <clears throat> for this new moon first, before we go into the process of the collective healing space, okay? So I'm gonna share with you um, some cards I pulled for a personal healing and just talk a little bit about how this first card is expressing through this full moon tonight. And this is perception, which is our opportunity to transcend the ego's separated sense of self. And what does that mean to you right now? For me, it's about um, when we forget that we're all one, when we forget that I have the power to send that love into the world and it will affect the world and it will change my life. When I forget that, it means I'm in the ego space of separation where I think that I'm cut off from the world, where I'm disconnected or where I'm not whole, where I forget. So that invitation that we said at the beginning of our process tonight to welcome in that fresh insight to welcome in that fresh perspective. It's all about perception. So we're given an opportunity now to be open to a fresh perspective. Our perception is changing. We don't have to change it. We just allow what is to be here without, ha, tricky part, <laughs> without judging, right? <laughs> so always judging, having so much compassion for that judgment. but. The best we can, we try to sort of observe it, right? And just notice when I'm putting self-righteousness into the situation or when I'm judging it as unpleasant or pleasant or something I like or dislike, you know? Sometimes we get a little too attached or caught onto whether we think something should be a certain way or not based on our value systems. And that can sometimes be about healthier ways of living. But it can also be about our own work we're doing with ourselves. So let's think about that in terms of maybe how are we limiting ourselves by our perception of the way things are or the way we think things are based on a um, kind of a limited perspective. Like we're so in it that we can't really see the bigger picture for whatever reason that is. So just kind of inviting in that fresh perspective. Maybe do a little journaling around that tonight. Um, and then the second card I pulled, um, and I'm gonna bring this alongside of it, is the Merlin card, number one. So um, it's this one. <laughs> um, it's alchemy, patience, and balance, right? And this is what I was talking about before in terms of the alchemy that we, um, when we remember to do things like that heart coherence meditation, if you look up heart math, search it on the internet sometime, it's great work around this. What is act, the actual studies, scientific studies they've been doing about um, this particular meditation of the heart cohesive meditation where we breathe in and out through our hearts, where we breathe in. And, so when, if you haven't, if you're just jumping on the video right now, hand on the heart and breathing in and out as if your heart is the a lung. And that brings that cohesiveness, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit with the most powerful energy there is, which is love. And that's what this is about. So in order to change our perception or to invite in a fresh perspective or to uh, remember that we are connected, to remember that we're not separate, to remember that it's all one and that we do have that power, we must bring in this the trust and patience and notice where are we kind of off balance with the way we're seeing things or the way that we're behaving. Take responsibility. That's that Saturn energy right now. Take responsibility for it. Don't beat yourself up, you know? Um, but maybe it's about taking responsibility for not giving yourself enough downtime. 
because it's in the downtime that we can sort of soften and relax. And when we can soften and relax and enjoy ourselves, ah, fresh breath, joy, play. That's when the mind space can get freed up, declutter the mind space with meditation, with play, with downtime. When we're so busy, busy, busy. And I know so many of us are talking about that all the time in every yoga class there is in the world and every meditation class there is in the world, you know, this busy world we live in. So taking a stand for slowing down might be one way of bringing in this alchemy um, to invite in your pre fresh perception. So I pulled two more cards for this um, full moon um, in Gemini Sagittarius with our Pluto Venus Saturn relationship going on. It's amazing transformation time. And this of course is focus three, three. Isn't that amazing? There's so much that can be said around three and the number of creativity and the divine feminine of creation. Um, it's a sacred geometry. It's the triangle. You know, it's like taking the masculine and the feminine and having a, a rebirth of uh, what is the expression of that. And that's what this year has been all about um, and channeling that energy. And what tonight is about is taking that triangle and having it pointing up so that we can channel that energy and go upward to balance and harmonize all our relationships, all our relationships, especially with ourselves first, which allows us to be in community with each other. I want to read a little bit about this card focus from the book and I'll tell you the deck I'm using, which is, where is she? Ah, the Wisdom of Avalon. And I love this deck for tonight because um, it's got a lot of mystical, magical, mysterious, um, mythical um, energy around it. And I love all things myth and story and magic and um imagination and creativity and Avalon is that to me it's powerful um my cat is trying to get out of this room so i'm going to let her out real quick and she's been trying to get out for a little bit so i didn't want to keep her in thank you for that um <laughs> i want to read this focus card for us and just kind of meditate um as you listen and how this might apply for you in this moment to receive this Full Moon Healing, page 68, okay, focus. So we have the Perception card first, okay, then we had the Merlin card, which is all about alchemy, patience, and balance. You know, change is coming. <laughs> we don't have to force it. Um, and then focus now. So now we're on focus. Okay, so it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If we're, if we're looking at perception and then we're looking at balance and then we're focusing, we're, it's like we refocus, we allow ourselves to stay present. That's what I'm getting from this. It says, it is a time to draw your energies inward. Let go of all things that are superfluous and unnecessary at this time. Focus your attention on the job ahead. Do what is in front of you. No matter how small the task, clear focus is required. And to me, that's you know, really a reassuring, especially when I think so many of us can get very overwhelmed when we feel like we have so much to do, right? And there's so much coming at us with all this information overload, right? So what if we can just sort of turn off the phone unplug, go inside, get calm, get into our hearts, be available, remember the breath. That's where all the truth is inside. It says, be mindful to stay in the present. Avoid looking back or too far forward, for it is only in staying in the true present the now, that the power residing in this sacred journey can be used for the benefit of all. Your path is marked with the need to regroup and remind yourself of your goal. 
Then stay in the present time and do what is directly in front of you. Only one small focused step at a time will place you at your destination. Yeah, setting the intention, right? Saying, okay, where I thought I was going, what I thought I wanted, is that the true desire or am I limiting myself? It's a really great place to start. Go down even deeper into the heart. What do you really want for the highest and best of you and all? What do you really want? What do you want to experience in this life? It's okay to want that. Because wanting that means that you get to live your true passion. And if you're living your true passion, then of course, you can be of true service, right? So we send that into our intention into the universe. We say thank you and we let it go. And then we focus on the task at hand and trust. Couldn't be any clearer. I know it's so interesting, this message, this particular message I feel like has been said before. <laughs> and I feel like this is about manifesting, you know? And I think that word, it's like, it's, I almost sometimes don't even wanna say it because it can be so kind of cliche in a way. Like everyone's talking about manifesting, the law of attraction and all of these things, but these are real things. This is about what are we manifesting? Why? What kind of people are we being? What kind of humans are we creating ourselves to be? And that's the world we're creating, you know? So um, one small step at a time. And then I, I pulled a fourth one because I feel like we're moving into a four year and it did just kind of pop out and um, I wanted to bring it forward too. And this is about your truth. And that really is this full moon has a lot to do with that. There's a lot of people questioning, what is my truth? How do I know what's true for me? How do I know what's right? How do I know what choice to make? Um, you know, how do I know which way to go? You know, what is my truth? What is my ultimate truth? Um, you know, and then also, maybe there's uh, the, the other flip side, which is the righteousness saying, this is the only way it is. You know, this is the truth for everyone. And for me, I just don't believe that there's one truth for everyone in terms of how to live our lives, in terms of how to even see the world, honestly. You know, I think we, we all live at a different maybe perspective or vibration or frequency or whatever you want to call it. Um, no one is better than the other. It's just where we're at. So um, just watching ourselves with this truth thing and, and maybe not clinging too tight to whatever truth may or may not be, you know, so that we can always be available to the truth of the moment. Um, because, you know, we're changing all the time, right? <laughs> so I wanna read this one too, because I'm really interested to find out what it says. Um, and find out what more we can listen to. Truth in word and deed is what is required of you by drawing this marker, as well as resonating. Ah, a resonance. What is resonating for you, your own personal truth? That's that vibration. Let's do that meditation tonight here. <clears throat> it's important now to demand the same from others. That's tough. In every person, there's a vibrational energy that's accessible by slowing down and searching within to, re to inquire, is this real? Am I hearing truth from another or is it a lie? Ah, accountability. Am I speaking honestly myself? Or am I lying to manipulate circumstances to get what I want? Or maybe I'm lying to myself and I just, didn't hear it. <laughs> we catch ourselves sometimes, you know, maybe to keep ourselves safe. And that that's a tendency, I think, for a lot of us to sort of maybe be in deception sometimes at certain phases in our life. Um, I've definitely had to 
clear a lot of that kind of stuff too, you know, through the years of, um, it's a, of, of, of where, where we're getting in our own way with certain beliefs we have about ourselves that we think are true. Like there's something wrong with me. Hmm. Is there a level within you where you think there's something wrong with you? And are we attaching to that? I've been playing around a lot with that self, um, with that belief. And for a while I thought, I don't, I don't, I don't have that thought. I don't have that belief. Um, and maybe it's not those words exactly, but when we have a perception that we're less than at something. We may not allow ourselves to experience more or have more or live more because we may not feel like we deserve it. So maybe there's somewhere along the way where we were told or shown or experienced or learned that we're not quite up to par. And so we go on with this sort of internal lie that really doesn't belong to us that says not quite good enough at something or maybe you're um, always going to be broken because you were hurt or whatever it is. So just examining some of that, maybe just a little bit with this and just sitting with it and bringing that love into it to bring some of that real deep healing. And maybe it's on a physical level. Maybe it's about pain or something like that. So we'll bring in some energy for that tonight too. Remember, even a little white lie will cause your light to fade and lose power. A lie takes you down into the lower vibrations of the ego world. And that's back to that separation thing, right? Forgetting that we're part of the oneness of life, which is all powerful. And that's ruled by se separation and limitation. And it's seduction of the lower world and serves no one but the forces of darkness or fear. This marker reminds you to remain in the light, even if it seems like a more difficult path. Yeah, sometimes it's just easy to go back to the comfort zone, right? Truth will build a bridge across a chasm. Truth will lend a magic wand of strength and integrity. Truth is freedom. Yeah. That's the word, isn't it? Freedom. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to look at my notes here and just see if there's anything else I wanted to make sure that I brought in. Yeah, it's just that this more of that asking yourself, where am I coming from? And keep coming back to that when you're making decisions, you know, are you making them out of fear or trust? And then how do you trust, which is to bring in that love energy, right? So we're going to set the intention here, which we have to go deeper into our hearts and observe the world from this place. We're going to do this couple of meditations here for this. Um, okay, I think that pretty much touched on everything I wanted to bring up. Faith, belief, your purpose on earth, peace and harmony. These are sort of the themes around this moon, this gift of this moon, the healing energies this moon is bringing in for us is the harmony we seek. So if there's any feeling of um, disconnection um, or confusion. I want us to really welcome in this energy of harmonious understanding, bringing peace, bringing mediation with the parts of ourselves that are in conflict or with others. So that's the three levels of healing we're working on tonight. It's the personal, the interpersonal, and the world. It's pretty big, right? I mean, it's the last full moon of the decade. Why not? <laughs> um, and as most of you know, I've been usually doing a new moon visioning circle, but um, I hadn't been able to do one the last, I think, um, couple of them. Um, so uh, this one just, just sang out to me and I was ready to do it. So um, yeah, harmony. Um, oh, making your home a happier place. So yeah, really thinking about your relationship with your home is a big deal right now too. You know, how can your home be your haven? How can your actual home be just a little more harmonious, you know, a little bit more of a support for you as you go through these big transformations that we are going through? Um, this year of completion, it really is. It's a completion of a decade, it's a completion of a year, and it's a completion of a cycle 
if you look into astrology a little bit more and some of the more esoteric teachings, you'll see that there's this 12-year uh, cycle. And if you think about a clock too, right? You have this completion of a circle that's divided up into these equal parts, right? So we have this 12. It's all just, I love it. And as you know, most of you anyways, you, you may know or may not know, but um, I know many of you watching right now live um, are aware of my... When I teach Reiki and when I train um, people in using energy for self-healing and healing others, I talk about the process being a circle. And this is nothing new. This is sacred wisdom that tells us that, you know, we, we need to honor each practice, each healing process, each session that we do with ourselves and with others as a circle, as it has a beginning. And then the process occurs and then it has an end to close it to make it sacred, to contain the energy of it within itself. Yeah, like like a circle, right? So, so the circle is our visual representation of the completion of a process, of the beginning of the process of it, and then the end, and then what is contained there within it is its own unique energy, its own unique gift that you can access any time you want to actually. I mean, there's no time and no space. So we can always go back or forward into these sacred portals, if you will. And this is a portal of time where we access connection with source energy in a very powerful way with, with others. And that is how we harness this energy. Um, um, oh, and so since we're completing this particular cycle, we're entering a new cycle very quickly. As, it, as we complete this one, we're entering this new one, right? 2020. And it's all about clarity, 2020 vision. So we have perception, alchemy, focus, and truth. The Merlin card was the second one, the alchemy, which is also justice and balance. Isn't that interesting? What does justice mean to you? Think about that. And, and, and I think that goes back to the truth that we're talking about here tonight, too. So we're, we're going to do some meditation, some visualizations, um, some channeling. And I want us to bring in whatever messages are coming through for you. I'm looking at my notes over here. Um, we're going to do some energy moving upward. We're going to also bring it back down into the body. Um, just kind of like what we were doing a little bit before um, to soothe and heal all those parts of you. And then we're going to observe the world through our heart space. And we're going to imagine that, was it 8 billion people on the planet? If I get, I'm, I'm not too good with those kinds of things when I think about how many people are on the planet. But um, so just thinking, hi, Carla, hi, sweetie. Hi, hi, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Um, <laughs> just check out the comments. Um, we're going to imagine that we can just observe the hearts of each being on the planet. And we're gonna do that from a heart space because the, the, the way that we affect the world is through the power of love and, and kindness. So observing with kindness, right? That's the real transformation space. Because when we observe with love and kindness, the eyes of spirit can see through us. Yeah. And the shifts can happen in our world. This is, I believe this. <laughs> this is what I stand for. This is what I see happening um, every day, you know? And so if we can do this in our communities and in our families, that means we are doing it in the world. You know, so the from the inside out way of doing things um, is so powerful. There's outside in healing and there's inside out healing. But truly, is there any such thing as outside in anyways? If we're all in this together, we're all in, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars. We're all in it together. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, thanks for um, just being on this journey with me tonight of inspiration, um, of messages from the divine, of creativity and of awareness and of healing. 
and of harnessing and of respecting um, and of creating magic and beauty in the world. So we're going to close with our meditations and our divinations, if you will, here of centering, um, of healing our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our relationships. It's 9.03 already. Isn't that amazing? An hour to me just goes so fast when I do these videos. I love it. I love doing this with you. I'm so grateful for this work we're doing together and I wanna just thank you again. So um, thanks for being my friends. <laughs> I may, may not know all of you, Personally, I know many of you personally, um, and I just want to say how amazing it is that we're doing this work together. I just, what a year, huh? What a decade, what a life. Okay, so I'm gonna just get us back into this energy healing space, okay? This whole call really has been that. I'm just so there with you on that. I know you are too, but let's do some of the real, like, visualization theta almost not quite theta theta is a little more of that deeper kind of almost sleep meditation but i want us to go into the alpha for sure and then the beta which is more of like kind of a heightened state but um focus too so um anyways brainwave states another day um right now let's take a few breaths close the eyes place a hand on your heart a hand on your belly Feel the connection on your body with your hands, the warmth. Feel your breath. And first I'm going to start with uh, just going through the major energy centers in our body, which we call the chakras. I'm going to do some chanting. And I want you to bring your focus all through them as I call it out. But before I do, I want you to... Um, Trust and know that your guides are with you. And that all our guides, guardians, beings of love and light in the non-physical world are with us. The celestial beings, the archetypes. Whatever your personal connection is with the cosmic, galactic, celestial, spiritual, earth, elemental, cellular DNA energy, sacred geometry codes, Akashic wisdom, whatever it is that you tap into, tap into it now. Say yes and be available. We're all in this together. I feel you, I see you in my mind's eye. It's very powerful, I'm grateful, thank you. And I want us all to thank any in insights that are already starting to come, let's just say thank you for that, thank you. The more we say thank you to the signs and the insights and the wisdom that come through, the more available we are to receiving more of it. So whatever you want to receive more of, say thank you to whatever you receive when you receive it. Really just so much thanks right now to this. To all my energy guides and beings of love and light that are here with us, I am grateful, thank you. I'm thankful for the wisdom and the messages that are coming through on this full moon at this time, connecting us in this beautiful planet we call Earth with each other here and now in the field of love. And the waves of that energy flowing in and out through our beings and our breath and our hearts and our bellies and our minds and our skin and our bones and our muscles and our gut and our lungs and our nervous systems and all the 12 strands of DNA and beyond. As we know, we are expanding our DNA field. It's not just little particles and pieces. It's the field of our innate body, which is the deep wisdom of our soul expressed in a body. Our DNA carries our soul energy. Our blood carries our lineage, our ancestry, all through the lifetimes, and especially this one that connects us to our, what we call the past, 
in this lifetime. And our DNA connects us more in with all the other lifetimes as well. And here we are integrating, we're integrating. That's what we're doing here as human beings on this planet at this time. We're integrators. We're integrators of whatever it is we'd like to call forth into this reality to create, to manifest, to say it is so and to make it so and to create it so in our hearts and minds, bodies and lives. So let us go through the chakras now and bring your arms in the air if you're able to and envision a vortex of light coming down from way up high above and bring the arms down and allow that vortex to come down into the brain, down into the head and swirling, swirling, swirling all through the top of the head, the brain, the third eye, we call that the third eye chakra. You might visualize some light coming in, whatever colors you see is totally fine. You want to place your fingers here or your hands here and just a little tap and say thank you and welcome that energy whatever Im images are coming or little flashes of insight welcome and say thank you thank you your throat thank you just bringing in some reiki mantras now your heart might even put a hand behind you and just imagine the energy going into your heart in the back and the front. Say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> your solar plexus up high in the belly, this area, the belly where we think, mmm, the belly. Digestion, right? Different multi-level layers of healing on so many levels for the solar plexus. And we're going to keep going down. Instead of going from down to up, we're going from up to down and just bringing that energy in and down into the body. And then down to the second chakra, which is just a little lower below the belly button, sort of just a little smaller area. It's very potent in there. Just breathe. And then down to your root. Just hands can go down there or just mind can go down there. Tailbone, legs, feet, connecting the earth. Just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Envision your body as a rainbow of light. And your field all around your body is a rainbow of light. We're going to bring in sound now. Imagining a field of light flowing out from your heart, up and down and into the space all around your body. Just bringing a lot of healing into your whole being, a soothing energy through your heart, a soothing energy into your belly, a soothing energy into your head, into your legs, into your eyes. Just receive as best as you can right now. And if it's hard for you to receive, just ask for help with that. Ask your guides, ask divine energy, Ask source, ask God, ask your heart, ask the earth, ask, ask. Ask for assistance with the process of receiving this energy. And you may or may not perceive it directly in the moment, but it's happening. So trust that it's coming in and just breathe. And say, I welcome fresh awareness. I welcome truth as it is. I welcome love and I allow that love to flow into my life, into my home, into my relationships. I allow that love to flow into my work and I allow this love that we are all channeling together to flow into the world. Be a radiator of that love right now. 
with diligence, with patience, with care, with determination, with focus, with passion. We allow this love to flow through our beings into the world. This is how we are the channel, that we are the vessel we allow. And from this space going up and up, imagine the tallest tree, imagine the stratosphere and the blue thin line around the earth and the deep, dark beauty of space and the stars and the planets and beyond and the cosmos and the galaxies and all of the universes. Wow. Imagine floating in our stratosphere and gazing upon the earth and seeing each other all out here in the stratosphere from this loving perspective. Doesn't mean we're any higher than anyone else or any better. It just means that we're choosing to hover in this perspective for just this moment long enough to gaze upon the planet and to gaze upon all of the beings on the planet and to gaze upon, imagine you have x-ray vision and you can see through into each and every heart on this planet as we are letting this love flow through our beings. And that full moon radiant and that Sagittarius sun, the focus of truth and that love is the only true, true, true truth of life as we let it flow and blast it into the earth sphere, like a, it's almost just like a radiant flowing pink energy is just spilling out into the sphere, this light. It's powerful. Let that love flow into the hearts of every person and every being and every animal and every tree and every layer of the earth and every being here, seen and unseen in the oceans, in the sky, in the earth. Thank you for doing this work with me tonight. Thank you for being present. And thank you for being the observers of light and love on the planet and being the way showers and the vessels and the channels. Thank you for being you just as you are. Remember to give yourself that love and respect and honor that you deserve. And let this energy continue to flow and stay with you through your dreams tonight. I'm so grateful for you. Happy full moon. Thank you for visioning this with me for setting these intentions with me. <sighs> Anchoring it in our beings. We're so grateful to our guides, our energy allies, our divine muse, our creative presence and our ability to know the truth of love. We carry this into the new and the next together. And with that, I close this process with divine love and wisdom. We are blessed. We are blessed. Thank you and namaste and satanam and Muchas gracias. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. You know where to find me. <laughs> um, I'm going to give everybody a little heart love here in the comments. And uh, we can just send each other that love, 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 love right now. Love, 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 love you all. Giving you so much love. And I will... Be seeing you soon. <laughs> Happy 2020 almost. Enjoy this 12-12 moment. Remember, on the 25th, it's the new moon. What? 
<laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Okay, sisters, brothers, everybody, peace to all you wonderful humans. Good night.